Now, there's a doctrine out there that I'm going to take a moment to talk about, which has got to be one of the stupidest doctrines I've ever heard, where they say that we should not use musical instruments in church. Really? That's one of the stupidest doctrines he's ever heard. All right, let's do this. Greetings, fellow space travelers. Bionic Dance here. If you don't know Steven Anderson, he's one of the creepiest, nastiest, most hate-filled preachers you'll ever encounter. If you're familiar with Matt Powell, these two are birds of a feather. Thing is, sometimes they say things that are not so much hateful as they are ridiculous. And for once, Anderson's target is another religious group. Several of them, actually. Watching these goofballs argue amongst themselves makes for some great entertainment. Now, I realize that this is not a salvation issue, but let me tell you something. If somebody actually believes in this doctrine, I doubt their salvation because how can you be so blind to what the scripture teaches to believe something so weird? When somebody believes something super weird and super unscriptural, I'm sorry, I doubt their salvation. Why are you so blinded? Let's roll right past the irony of this schmuck saying that people are blinded and look at the meat of what he's saying. People who believe there should be no music in church might just be damned to hell. Getting your rock on in God's house is a deal breaker according to some people, but Stephen here says that it's a hell-worthy trespass just thinking that music in church might be evil. I don't know whether this is the stupidest thing I've ever heard, but it's definitely trying for the top ten. Do they really think that their God gives a rat's backside about this crap? And by the way, every person that I've personally known who taught that musical instruments are wrong in church all ended up being unsaved. Um, how does he know that? Maybe someone who understands this stuff better than I do could explain. Though I suspect it's some weird quirk of Stevie Pooh's particular church. But I thought that being saved was something that you had your whole life to do. So unless all of these anti-instrumentalists he's ever known are dead, did you kill them, Steve? Did ya? Or he's talking out of his butt? Or there's something I just don't get. Now, I'm not saying that there aren't saved people out there who believe in it. I'm just saying I've never met one and I'd be shocked because it's that stupid to believe it. It's so unbiblical. What, is the Holy Spirit guiding you into any truth at all? I mean, have you read the Bible at all? I mean, the only way I could see somebody believing in this and being saved is just if they haven't read the Bible. You know, let's say they're saved, but they just didn't read their Bible and somebody taught them this and, and they just never read the Bible. But if you're actually saved and reading your Bible, I don't see how it'd be possible to believe in something so stupid as no musical instruments in church. Someone who believes what he says he believes, or doesn't, is stupid because people haven't read their Bible, which has to be one of the most stupid and frankly boring books I've ever tried to read. Yeah, tried. I only got halfway through Second Kings before I said, screw this crap, and went back to reading good sci-fi fantasy. And that's what this sounds like, honestly. He sounds like someone having a bitter argument over which one is better, Star Wars versus Star Trek. No, not even. Both religious groups prefer Star Trek. What they're doing is arguing over Next Generation versus the original series. That's what this sounds like. The only difference being that Trekkies know their story is fictional. I, I hope. This is their argument. Well, there's no mention in the Gospels or the Book of Acts of them ever using musical instruments. Well, here's a good principle for you. Don't base what you believe on what the Bible doesn't say. Base what you believe on what the Bible does say. And you know what the Bible does say? All throughout the Old Testament, over and over and over again, God commands us to praise the Lord on stringed instruments. His video is goofy, and I could make fun of Stevie Poo all through the whole thing, but I did get curious about what the other side has to say on the matter. They actually kind of believe in doing what the Bible says the way Stephen does, but they believe in doing only what the Bible says. It's a subtle difference between only do this and never do that, but it's at least effectively the same. Apparently, in Ephesians 5.19, it talks about people singing to God, but it never mentions instruments, so that's all that's allowed. They've also decided that music will, and I'm quoting here, arouse the affections, and they think that only God should be allowed to do that. Of course, why human voices can't do the same thing isn't addressed, but what you gonna do? Both sides are frickin' insane, but at least now we have the other perspective. So what did Jesus dying on the cross have to do with musical instruments? 
So God's just telling us, praise him on the strings. Praise him with the, sim with the cymbals. Praise him with the trumpet. Praise him with the harp. Praise him on stringed instruments. Jesus dies on the cross. All right, musical instruments are a sin. That's got to be the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. Especially since the Bible commands us in the New Testament to sing psalms in the church to use psalms. And what do the psalms say? The psalms talk about musical instruments over and over. So I guess according to these Mennonites or who are the ones who do this again? Church of Christ, too? Mennonite. Oh, it, but, oh, what do they have in common? Not saved. Church of Christ teaches <laughs> baptismal regeneration. Mennonites are not even close to being saved. They have a super weird salvation doctrine. Hardcore hyper-Calvinism and just total uh, false doctrine. Not even close to being Bible-believing. And I'm going to get on the Mennonites a little bit more in a moment. Star Trek, Star Wars, Star Trek, Star Wars. Does he even hear himself? It's worse than sci-fi geeks arguing. Now it sounds like high school girls gossiping behind each other's backs. Look at those Mennonites. Don't tell anyone, but I heard they use musical instruments right in church. Like, oh my God, can you believe it? And look at their size of their butts. As if. That's what you sound like, Stevie. Just letting you know. But the Mennonites... The Church of Christ, anybody else out there? The, the church that tarries long at the punch bowl? Uh, they don't do, they don't, they're against musical instruments. Who else? Amish? Who else? The Hutterites. I've never even heard of them. Oh yeah, the job of the Hutterites. I'd have thought a religion geek like Steve would know about them, even if he does prefer Star Trek. In all seriousness, they're Baptists, and so is Steven, so I'd have thought he'd know about them. Presbyterians have musical instruments, don't they? Really? Wow, that's... Yeah. Well, you know what's funny? I went to a Presbyterian church and they were rocking out in Sacramento. <laughs> so they, they must not have been on that regulatory principle. Spectrum, right? Yeah, there's a spectrum. Yeah, that's true. So I, I guess I, the Presbyterian church I went to was on the loose end of the spectrum. They sang Brown Eyed Girl as a congregational song. They sang rock and roll songs as a congregational song. They put the words on the screen in church and we sang John Denver country roads take me home <laughs> congregationally you want to talk about committing blasphemy john denver is right up there and when my parents found out that i went to this presbyterian youth group they were screaming at me like what are you doing you know? and then i told my dad i said dad there's no bible teaching there was no teaching they literally didn't even have a sermon half the time and when we did have a sermon, it was just three minutes long, and it was either telling you, don't fornicate or don't do drugs. And then my dad's like, well, okay, I guess, whatever. I said, we're just going there to party. We go there to hang out with our friends. You know, and he's just like, well, don't become a Presbyterian, you know. I'm like, don't worry about it. And if that's all church was, I wouldn't be making these videos. But it's, you know... Not. Especially not in Stephen's church. Trust me, I've got other videos where he's being a rabid and raging homophobic bigoted pisswad. So do a lot of people. If you're not subscribed to Suris, go do that now. He's kind of made Steve and his ilk a personal project. You know, that makes sense, because like the Puritans, they were against the musical instruments. Uh, apparently a lot of the Presbyterians, Mennonites, uh, all bozos. Bozos, all of them. Okay, nonsense. Garbage, okay? First of all, just because the Bible doesn't mention something doesn't mean you can't do it. Okay, we can't do the things that the Bible tells us not to do. If the Bible just doesn't say anything either way, then it's up to us whether we do that or not. But the Bible commands us over and over again to sing praise to God. Well, it's Old Testament. What changed? Every time Christians are told about something horrible in the Old Testament, they do usually claim that the New Testament flipped the reset switch because Jesus. Of course, that would mean that God changed his mind about stuff, so he probably wasn't perfect, but let's leave that be for a moment. We've got a guy supporting the case that the New Testament changed nothing. How ripe are those cherries you're picking, Stevie Poe? And by the way, okay, we're going to be singing in heaven with harps. Every single person when they get to heaven they're like issued a harp 
Are they issued harp lessons? I mean, think about it. Someone gets up to heaven and they're all, uh, how do I play this thing? Like, do I just strum or are you gonna teach me some tunes over here? Picture what heaven must sound like with a bunch of people carrying harps and no idea how to play them. And they have the nerve to call that paradise. Let's up the ante. Give them all bagpipes, accordions, and a hurdy-gurdy. And why a harp? You'd think Paradise could give us a guitar, you know? Or an MP3 player. It's not Paradise if I can't listen to my favorite band anymore. I'm just saying. Nonsense. Yeah, we're supposed to sing Psalm 150, right? All about music, just listing musical instruments. We're supposed to sing that a cappella. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, is that a crazy doctrine? It's crazy. Hey, if we're gonna be in heaven, if we're gonna experience everlasting joy, there is only one way music can be done right. Now we are so happy we do the dance of joy! Anyway, I just wanted to go off on that because it just, it gets me fired up. It's just, it's, it's so weird, you know, and, and the rationale behind it, wow. That gets him fired up. Arguments about music in church. Okay. Things like this are what make me glad I'm not religious. They're just icing on the cake. It's maybe not polite to point and laugh at other people, but sometimes they just bring it on themselves, don't they? Until next time, fellow space travelers, this is Bionic Dance, saying don't run on automatic. Instead, please. Think. You know, Dewey, we wouldn't have to do this if I had more Patreon patrons. Just saying. Vote me down and I shall become more powerful than you can possibly imagine.